That's not what middle America is. Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz has a long-standing relationship with China. It began many decades ago when he taught English and American history in the southern Chinese city of Foshan more than 30 years ago. Since then, he has frequently criticized the Chinese government over its violent repression of pro-democracy campaigners. But that has not stopped Republicans from trying to falsely paint the Democratic running mate as an apologist for the Chinese Communist Party. This is what some prominent Republicans have said about Waltz and his China connection. Communist China is very happy that Governor Tim Waltz is Kamala's VP pick. No one is more pro-China than Marxist Waltz. That was the writing from Donald Trump's foreign policy advisor Richard Grenell on X. Grenell served as ambassador to Germany and also the acting director of the national intelligence when Trump was president. Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas said that Mr. Walls owed the American people an explanation about his unusual 35-year relationship with Communist China. It's a play that the GOP is hoping will resonate with increasing number of Americans who view China as the enemy. But here's the thing, how much of these charges will stick to Walls rather conventional, if not particularly hawkish views that he has on the US-China relationship, that is still an open question, at least at this point of time. Waltz had previously backed Hong Kong's pro-democracy protests. He earned praise from leading activist Jeffrey Ngo at that time. He also sat on a committee which focused on scrutinizing human rights violations in China. He has in the past urged China to ensure the preservation of traditional Tibetan culture and life. He also expressed the need to stand firm on China's maritime expansion into the South China Sea. At the same time, he said back in a 2016 interview that there are many areas of cooperation that the US and China can work on. Unlike the sometimes feverish tone that now accompanies talk of US-China rivalry, Waltz had suggested at that time that the two countries could cooperate on issues of global import like trade and climate change. He has also spoken rather warmly of his experience with the Chinese people after multiple visits largely centered around education and cultural exchange. So here's a sample from one of Waltz's old interviews. He said, and I quote, if they had a proper leadership, there are no limits on what they could accomplish. He said this to a Nebraska newspaper, the Star Herald, back in 1990. The quote goes on. They are such a kind, generous and capable people. They just gave and gave and gave to me. Going there was one of the best things I have ever done, unquote. Waltz visited China for the very first time in 1989 to teach in the southern city of Foshan through Harvard University's World Teach program. His arrival coincided with the 1989 Tiananmen Square protests and the government's crackdown, an event which he said left a lasting impression on him. In the following years, Waltz returned to China almost every summer with students that he used to teach in Nebraska and in Minnesota, even spending his honeymoon there with his wife Gwen, who helped him set up a company to facilitate the travel to China and back. Waltz's comments about China policy before the Trump presidency represented what was the prevailing attitude back at that time, which was considerably less hostile than what it is today. Waltz's approach to China-related issues on the campaign trail will probably be less directly related to his earlier experiences and much more reflective of whatever broader approach to foreign policy and to US-China relations in particular that Vice President Kamala Harris and her team adopts. Waltz would not want to come across as soft on China at a time when most non-college educated white Americans, particularly in the Midwest, view China as the country that has stolen their jobs. Harris and Waltz need to win the Midwest to win the White House. But the Harris campaign so far has made very little mention of Waltz's China experience, even as it has leaned into depictions of the Minnesota governor as a typical Midwestern dad, coach and teacher. 
It is also yet to lay out how Vice President Kamala Harris or Tim Walz would handle China, which both the Biden and Trump administrations have treated with a degree of toughness. Given the current political climate, Walz cannot afford to appear as a softy on China. Dealing tough with China is one issue where there is bipartisan consensus between Republicans and Democrats, but that was not always the case. At the turn of the 90s, the one year that Tim Walz spent teaching English in southern China was the start of what would become a decades-long relationship with that country. As high school teachers in Nebraska and then in Minnesota, Walz and his wife Gwen regularly took trips to China in the 1990s and the early 2000s to introduce students to China's history and its culture. Walz has said that he has traveled to China about 30 times, including for his honeymoon. So by 1994, Walz had taken a job teaching social studies at the Alliance High School in Western Nebraska. That is where he met and fell in love with a fellow teacher, Quen Whipple. They married on the 4th of June, which happened to be the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square crackdown. He later went on to say, there was no doubt in my mind I would remember that date. That deep history of engagement with China reflects a lesser known international dimension of the Democratic VP nominee. If elected vice president, Waltz would bring to the White House unusually extensive personal experience in China, a history which supporters say could be an asset at a time of volatile relations between Washington and Beijing. Waltz's record in the House of Representatives from 2007 to 2019 showed a lawmaker who often drew on his personal experience in the country to lay out sharp critiques of China's human rights record. He took a special interest in both Tibet and Hong Kong, meeting both with the Dalai Lama and with Joshua Wong, who is a prominent Hong Kong pro-democracy activist. As a congressman, Waltz did not shy away from talking about his experience in China. But he was also very critical of the Chinese government right from the start. And over his 12-year tenure in the House of Representatives, Waltz's criticism of China's human rights record became even sharper, and particularly so as the Chinese government took a more authoritarian turn under Xi Jinping. Waltz served on the Congressional Executive Commission on China, which is a bipartisan group of lawmakers focused on monitoring and reporting on human rights and the rule of law in China. Transcripts show that other commission members often praised Waltz for his China expertise. Waltz also co-sponsored a resolution demanding the release of Liu Xiaobo, who is a Chinese dissident and a Nobel laureate. He criticized China's unfair trade practices and its crackdown on human rights lawyers and religious groups. In 2015, Waltz participated in a rare American delegation to Tibet led by Nancy Pelosi, who was then the House Minority Leader. The next year, he met with the Dalai Lama in what he later described as a life-changing lunch. Jeffrey and Go who is a prominent Hong Kong pro-democracy activist, credited Walls with being, at one point, the only House Democrat who was willing to back the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act. According to that act, it would compel the United States government to impose sanctions on those officials who are responsible for human rights abuses in Hong Kong. Towards the end of his tenure in Congress, Walls continued to stress the importance of identifying areas of cooperation with China. But he also began to question the long-held wisdom that opening up trade with China would lead the country to becoming more open and more democratic. So the question is, once he's in the White House, post-November, what kind of experience will Waltz bring to the table when it comes to dealing with China? Can the US and China go back to a reset of how it was before 2016, before Trump took over the presidency? Or will Waltz continue to follow the path which has been led in a bipartisan sort of way, first by the Trump administration, followed by the Biden administration, where they're going to be tough on China and to be seen as being tough on China. Waltz will surely want to leave a mark of his own.